Hi there. Welcome back to the Agency Secrets Podcast. This is Lydia, the podcast producer of this show. And today we are in week two of our interview series with Brian Will. And Brian Will, just as a reminder, is a very highly successful serial entrepreneur in multiple different industries. And the companies that he has built have been worth hundreds of millions of dollars. In this week's episode, we will be talking about who you are in your company. Are you self-employed or are you a business owner? And are you trying to create a lifestyle or are you trying to create value? Enjoy. Welcome to the Agency Secrets Podcast, where we help your independent agency gain insights into the secrets proven to build a thriving agency with your co-hosts, me, Kyle Gorman. And me, Justin Clements. And don't forget to reach out to us with any questions. Or if you have topics you would like covered in upcoming episodes, just let us know. You can learn more at agencysecretspodcast.com. That's agencysecretspodcast.com. And remember, be humble, stay hungry, and always hustle. I want to ask a couple questions about your um, your wins because a lot of people out there have a lot of ideas. There's a lot of professors. I, I went to school and got an MBA. And I wasn't excited to talk to any of the professors like I'm excited to talk to you because you've done it. You don't just read about it. You don't just theorize about it. What you've done is is prove it, proven results. Um, I'm looking here at a, a snippet, four exits and creations of, of other a couple other companies that were followed by several years of consulting. I know you're not very braggadocious, but I want our listeners to know the advice they're getting, who, what you've accomplished, applying what you've learned over the years. What have you accomplished? Like some of the businesses you've started have gone on to be, become public companies. Uh, you've had several exits, insurance industry, restaurant industry, landscaping, uh, franchise. What Can you kind of give us, if you were to brag and, and tell our listeners, like, I want them to know why they should be listening to every word that comes out of your mouth and hanging on it with, you know, and taking notes and going back and listening to this again and buying your books. You know, I, I joke in the industry, insurance industry, my claim to fame is I started the very first call center in America to sell individual health insurance. Did that with Assurance Health back in 1996. You know, we, we, we figured out that there was a problem with the system. We didn't, we didn't want to go belly to belly. We didn't want to drive around town. We wouldn't, didn't want to pick up wet signatures and so I created a call center environment and I got an insurance company to allow me to do it, right? I sold that company after 18 months to a company called Simply Health. Simply Health turned into a company called Connecture. Connecture went public. They're now back private, but one of the biggest Medicare uh, companies out there online. Then went on to start a company uh, called Premier Financial Group. Premier, Premier, Premier Financial Group ended up getting acquired by GetInsured.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is still operational here in Atlanta as a call center and customer service center and now runs, I don't know, seven or eight or 10 state exchanges around the country. We started a company called Monetize It that was acquired by, uh, it was a lead gen company, was acquired by a private equity firm out of Chicago, turned into MediaWiz. We were the largest online media company in the country. Started a company called Wellness Services, which ended up being sold to Towers Watson for about $400 million. Um, we started, um, let's see what else started another one that we sold to HGS, which is the largest call center out of India. That was called Calibrium direct. Not, not to mention the restaurants. You, then, you know, I, many restaurants? then I, you know, sold a couple of companies, quit working, did some consulting, got bored. And as a cliche, bought a restaurant and now I have nine. Mm-hmm. Now I want to put that in perspective. I've owned 16 there you go. I have nine that are successful. Yeah. That means seven failed. Yeah. yeah. And, that, and that right there, that's what I love about, um, you know, in, in the way that you've kind of outlined this book as well is again, those are the things that we often don't hear about. And so I love that you, your willingness to put that out there because I think people need to hear that. They need to understand that, you know, all of these successes come from, you know, they're not everything goes well, you know, not everybody truly has the Midas touch, even though it may look like it. Five of the first seven restaurants failed, and then I figured it out. Yeah. And how much time do you spend managing those restaurants? I already know the answer to this because it's in the book. Zero. And they're they're making you money every year. Yeah. I spend, to be fair, probably 
five or six hours a week. Yeah, and they, they do about $9 million in revenue, and they're very healthy. Mm-hmm. Sounds like a good recipe. <laughs> Look what he did there. Hey, so uh, <laughs> so one of the things, obviously, you know, our audience in the insurance space and a lot of, um, you know, the feedback we get, a lot of people that, that we know are in kind of this health insurance space, that, you know, you mentioned the restaurant, you mentioned the call center, like especially in the restaurant, you know, everybody seems to think they can run and own a restaurant. But insurance is a, is a unique product. And so not a lot of people have a passion around uh, getting into the insurance space. What prompted you to get into that and kind of recognize an opportunity in that market? And, uh, you know, you, you've been around that for so long. So what is it about that industry that piqued your interest in, in getting involved there? Yeah, so I was, uh, I own my landscaping company. We had franchised it. We had about seven franchises. And then the bottom fell out and I lost everything. So complete collapse, lost all the franchises, went from having seven offices, seven franchises, back to me and a guy named Jeff and a truck and a shovel. Mm -hmm. That was 1996. Mm -hmm. I was a pretty miserable human being. And my buddy Sam, who ended up being a future business partner, comes to sell me insurance because I'd lost my insurance and tries to recruit me. And I didn't want to sell insurance. I mean, who the heck wants to sell insurance? I'd sold used cars. I'd done Amway. I wasn't going to sell insurance. Right. Right. So he shows me this check and the next month, another check and the next month, another check it took him six months of showing me checks. And I finally said, okay, how do I sell insurance? He said, well, come with me on an appointment. So I went with him on one appointment, walked in this lady's house. He sold her policy, walked out. And he said, I made 500 bucks. Hmm. I said, I'm in. What do I need to do? He said, give me a check for $500. So I bought $500 worth of leads. Then I was out selling insurance the next day. By the way, I didn't have a license. Yeah. He didn't tell me I needed one. Yeah, not important at the time. Back in 1996, you didn't, right? You could get a temporary <laughs> license for like 90 bucks. Yeah, yeah. So this was a Monday. I got my leads on Tuesday, and Saturday I'd sold 12 policies and made like $3,000. Yeah. Walked into this guy's office we worked for and put him on the counter, and he said, how many policies is that? I said, 12. He said, how many leads did you buy? I said, 20. Hmm. He goes, we got to go to lunch. This is from chapter nine, Clueless Tenacity, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm reading from the book. Guys, you got to get this book. I can't read it all to you. After I started a landscaping company and sold my first job, I had to ask a friend to come and teach me how to plant bushes correctly. I I had never done it before. When I started selling insurance, I went on one sales call with a friend and then started the next day. I was clueless landscaper by day and a clueless insurance expert with one day's worth of experience by night. When I started selling software, I didn't know how it worked. I took along I took along a guy who was way smarter than me to answer the technical questions. When I bought my first restaurant, I still didn't know how to cook. I don't know how to make drinks. I don't know how to use the point of sale system. I don't know anything about seating charts or how the kitchen operates. I literally don't know how to run a restaurant at all but I have seven of them now doing around $9 million a year in revenue and two more under construction. 4,000 cases of sports drinks kind of got you going down this path of doing things you don't know. Uh, can you tell us about that story? You First of all, thanks for your service to the U.S. military. Air Force, is that right? Air Force and Army. Wow. Um, and when you when you were – was this when you were in the Air Force that you had a chance to uh, to buy – 48,000 bottles of a sports drink for 200 bucks and then sell it? Actually, at the time, I was in the National Guard, but I was just mowing the grass there, (laughs) my landscaping company. And the guy that was running the base came to me and said, hey, I got a problem. You seem like an industrious young man. Come with me. We went into one of the warehouses down at the Army base down here, and he said, we just shipped these 4,000 cases to Kuwait, and the war ended. Cause it only lasted a hundred days yeah. and now they shipped it back and the sports company won't take the, the sports drink back. I need to get rid of it and get these 4,000 cases out of here. What can you do for me? You know, I read this book by Richard Branson called screw it, just do it. And one of his famous quotes is if you get an opportunity, say yes, figure it out later. I literally saw an interview with him two days ago and he said the same thing. Sometimes you just take the opportunity and you figure it out later. All right. So 
long story short, I figured out how to move 48,000 bottles of Gatorade to a local gas station chain. In a matter of a couple of days, they paid me $10,000. The Army shipped it out for free. I did absolutely nothing. Yeah, you, you took $200 and turned it to $10,000 a matter of a day. Is that was that the first taste you got of that type of thing of man I can I can figure stuff out um, is that the first taste or did you get a taste of that kind of before that uh, I, I would say no I mean I, I've, I've had experiences like that before I think that was one of the most exciting back then because I was still very young and very broke and ten thousand dollars was a lot of money and I thought that was super cool. Um, but it's, it's one more piece of information, by the way, that went into my filter to tell me that you, you can do some things that are crazy and you don't really have to know what you're doing. So it's a, mm-hmm. it's a piece of the puzzle that's in the brain that helps me make decisions moving forward. Yeah. One of the, one of the other things, this is one of the business lessons that you have outlined in the book, and I'd love for you to expand on this, understanding um, – what you're going to be, who you're going to be. Are you going to be a business owner? Are you going to be self-employed? I I think a lot of people in small business get confused by those two things. So uh, tell us about that. Tell us about what that difference is and why it's important that we understand who we want to be. This is about whether you want to build value for the future or whether you're trying to create a lifestyle for yourself. And there's nothing wrong with either one of those answers. Mm -hmm. If you want to be able to build a lifestyle for yourself, you're going to be self-employed. You're going to start a business. You're basically creating a job for yourself. You can set your own schedule and you can make money. Mm-hmm. The problem that I've always had with that scenario is that as a self-employed person or a one-man shop or even a two or three-man shop, if you get sick or something happens to you or you get incapacitated and you can't work, if you get in a car accident tomorrow and you end up in the hospital for four months, you have no income stream. The other problem with that is eventually you're going to have to do that for the rest of your life. You're not building value in something that you can sell. Right. In my case, I've always wanted to build a business that created value that I could sell some point at some point down the road and walk away from. So, and again, one of the things I've always done in my business is to make myself useless or make myself inconsequential to the actual operations of the business on a day-to-day basis. For the comment with the restaurants, I never go there. Half of my employees have never seen me and don't know who I am. The customers don't know me. And if I sold the business tomorrow, nobody would miss me. And that's a good thing. Yeah. If you're self-employed, it's all about you. If you own a business, it's about the business. I've always wanted to own a business. Not that there's anything wrong with the other, but I want to build something of value that I can sell in the future. And I I do think that's an important distinction. And I'm glad you you outlined that because I I do think that that is an incredibly important distinction for people to know. And again, you know, kind of speaking directly to our audience as agency leaders, agency owners, or maybe even independent agents that are, you know, trying to build something up. As you look to the future, make sure you understand which one you're really doing. Because what, what I often see is people that really kind of start out with the desire to be self-employed. And then all of a sudden they have a business, but they really never wanted to be a business owner. And now they're in a spot that they're really not all that comfortable with. Um, And it's hard to backtrack that. And so now you're trying to, you know, you're floundering or you're trying to figure out. And I've I've seen too many people that are, that are business owners that are earning less, more frustrated and more stressed than they would be if they would have just set out understanding from day one, I'm self-employed. And that's what I'm trying to develop is a situation of self-employed. And so I I think that's an important distinction for people to understand that I'm glad you outlined that and and try to help people understand. You got to know who you are. uh, That's going to help you in the future. Absolutely. I think it's really interesting in chapter eight, you talk, uh, you almost try to talk people out of starting a business. Yes. And, and I kind of like it. Uh, I went to school to be an art teacher and a preacher. I've, I've done neither of those. And the, 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 in the preaching class, uh, they said, if you ever do a wedding, you have to meet with the, the kids or the couple or whatever beforehand and try to talk them out of getting married. Because if you can talk them out of it, they shouldn't be doing it. And that's like, that's exactly what you're right. Doing. That's what you're doing here. You're like, you list all these reasons why you should just get a job. Hey, it's steady income. It's stable. It's got benefits. You don't have to worry about making payroll. You get a 401k vacation times. You, you know, you don't have to worry about getting sued, which I want to hear about you getting sued by the guy on, on the landscaping job. Uh, <laughs> that, that's a peach right there. Va- you know, no worries about getting sued. No customers calling you home at night. No need for employees. Uh, no stress about the fact that 
ones we can't be uh, can't pay yourself because you know you have to pay everyone else first. Um, having a job is a lot easier. You go on to say, so why are you doing this? Uh, is it the hope of making a ton of money? Remember, thirty percent of new businesses fail in the first year, and you just go on to like talk people out of it. So knowing all that, you knew all that when you started. After you had success, why would you keep starting the next company? Like there, I'm sure there's a point right after one your first or your second exit, like you've never had to work again. So what's your why? Why do you keep doing this? And why should someone uh, not start a business? What's a good indicator if for someone that says no, you you absolutely shouldn't just just save your money? So I'll give you a couple scenarios here. Number one, I didn't have a choice. I didn't have a choice because I. Unfortunately, when I was a young man, had a bad attitude, a chip on my shoulder. I was a terrible employee and I couldn't hold a job. <laughs> the only job I could hold was a bus boy at Applebee's. That's what I did. And then I got married. I had no home, no car. I had no job. And then I got a job making four bucks an hour mowing grass. That's about where I was mentally. So I wasn't a guy who graduated from college. I didn't have an a, a MBA. I wasn't anybody anybody wanted to hire. So I always joked that my only option was to be self-employed. That's mm-hmm. why I did it. I was too dumb to know I was going to fail. I had no other choice. So I did it for that reason. Now, the problem is with a lot of people that go into business, I'll give you a second scenario. I have a friend who works for a very large company in Atlanta, and he makes several hundred thousand dollars a year, upwards of a half a million. You guys are in business. Do you know how hard it is to start a business and make a half a million dollars a year? And not only that, but know you're going to get it every year for the next 30 years. And then you're going to get a pension. That is an income level. Yeah, that is an income level that is difficult to get to owning a small business or being self-employed. So why would you give that up to go fight fires, which is what you do when you're a small business owner? So if you... You really got to want to be a business person in order for you to mentally be able to go through the problems that you're going to have to go through in order to be successful. If you are weak or if you don't have the fortitude or tenacity to fight people and governments and and problems and the weather and all those kind of things, you probably ought to keep your job. You, you need to, you need to want this. I, I say those things, Justin, because if I can talk you out of it, then you shouldn't have got into it in the first place. Mm-hmm. And I think what I say in there is all these reasons I just told you not to do it. Do they make you mad or do you agree with them? If they make you a mad, like this guy's an idiot, he's trying to talk me out of it. Maybe you got a shot. <laughs> if you agree with any of them, maybe you shouldn't do it. Yeah. Why do I do it? I, I unfortunately, even after you said I sold a couple of companies, I tried to retire a couple of times. I just don't have it in my DNA. I have to go do something. I'm a builder. I'm not a manager, by the way. I'm a builder. I'll build it. Somebody else manages it. I just build it because once it's built, my only excitement in life is building or selling. Everything in the middle to me, I, I, I don't have the, I'm ADHD. I can't focus on things like that. I'm not a manager. I don't like doing the detail stuff. I build it or I sell it. That's what I do. So you give us all the the, the playbook and the guide uh, in this book. How many? How what's the percentage? Do you think it's possible for other people to actually go out and do what you did and be as successful as you? Um, I mean, you're giving us all the playbook. I'm reading it and, I, and I'm trying hard every day myself, right? But do you really think it's possible for others? Uh, you kind of create your own luck through this success filter that gets better and better and better. Um, do, you, do you sincerely think it's possible for our listeners to apply these things? Uh, or Listen, should- my, my first book is called I Give the Dumb Kids Hope. I got kicked out of high school. I ended up graduating with a 1.2 grade point average. I was kicked out of my house at 18. I had to join the military because I had no place to go. Wow. I tried to go to college and dropped out. I couldn't hold a job, but anything as a bus boy or a, a lawn boy. And yet I was able to achieve these things in life. So what are the advantages that everybody else may have over me? Or even if they live the same kind of life, I grew up in an abusive home. Mm-hmm. If someone like me can do it, which is a point of my first book, anybody can do it. But there are some things that you need to understand. And those are the things I write about in the book. You need to understand about your success filter, your personal filter, 
You need to understand who you are inside this business. Because if you're in the wrong role or trying to be the wrong person, you will fail. You need to understand when you need to take advice. Much like Kyle has a business out there that gives advice to these business owners. I, I use this as an example. Look at Apple, largest company on the planet, right? Trillions and trillions of dollars. They have a CEO, Tim Scott. Is that his name? Yeah. He runs the day to the operations. He's a pretty smart guy, right? But he has a board of directors. You know right. what the board of directors do? They have different success filters from different areas of life, and they come together once a month or once a quarter, and they say, here are the problems, here are the things you're running up against, and here's our advice and input based on our filters on how you can succeed at a higher level. And Tim Cook takes their advice, and Apple's a $3 trillion company. Now, let me ask you something. If Tim Cook needs a board of directors, what makes you think you're smarter than Tim Cook and you can do it by yourself? That's right. Yeah. Alrighty, I really hope you enjoyed that section of the podcast with Brian Will. Tune in next week and you'll get to hear more of our amazing interview with Brian Will. Have a nice week.